It never gets old seeing those incredible sights. The North Carolina Courage have delighted the fans in North Carolina the last two years. Back-to-back -back Shield winners, back-to-back -back championship winners. And if you include their time at the Western New York Flash, the North Carolina Courage have won three NWSL championships and three Shields, all under the direction of the great Paul Riley. As we welcome you to the Bojangles roster reveal, Hello again, everybody. I'm Dean Linky. Delighted to be with you the entire time for the NWSL Challenge Cup as we are going to have you wired in. We will do a pregame show, postgame show, on the road with press conferences, you name it. We'll have you covered for all things North Carolina Courage. And to do that, the greatest women's pro soccer coach in the world, bar none, Paul Riley join me as Paul comes in, the top man for the North Carolina Courage, to break down the change in schedule and also the roster reveal. Paul Riley, great to be with you, Coach. Thanks for joining us. No problem. How you doing, Dean? Great to see you again. Yeah, indeed. And right away, we're going to show some practice footage as today was your final practice. Tomorrow, you head to Utah. And Paul, you said all along the girls have been buzzing. Practice has been good. How'd it go today? Yeah, I mean, it's been really great. It's been a short preseason, obviously, but it's been really good. And I think the, the main thing from the fans' perspective is know that the preparation of the players outside of the last three weeks was amazing. And obviously, it makes our job easy when they came in from their housemate training and their individual training and all that for two months prior while we were going through the pandemic stuff uh, to come back and be in this kind of shape. It makes our life so much easier. And we've been able to concentrate a lot more tactically, I think, in the last three weeks since we've had everybody in. But it's a great group of players again, and you know, it's a deep roster. Uh, we've got depth, we've got speed, we've got ability, we've got talent, uh, but they like each other. They love training, and uh, I th you know, I think they're, they're very mission-driven, and I think this is obviously a, another challenge for them, and I think that's what's been missing from the preseason. If there's anything I can say that's been missing, it's that ability to play at another club, kick somebody else for a change and not yourself. So I think it's, it's difficult. We don't know if the set pieces are going to work. We don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work because it's the first game of the season. No college games, uh, no preseason games. So we're going in pretty cold, but the team looks great. Physically, we look amazing. Uh, mentality has been fantastic. And uh, we're pretty healthy. We've got a slight uh, hamstring with Jess McDonald. Other than that, you know, I think 24 out of 25 players are ready to go. So the group is excited to get on the plane to Utah. And, um, you know, we're on a charter flight, which is nice for the players too. I think it's something different for the players and something we should have in the league. So I think it's great for them and they can concentrate on doing the job at hand, which starts Saturday starts pretty quick, to be honest with you. Yeah, Saturday, 12.30 Eastern time, which will be 10.30 Utah time. It'll be an early game. You can see it live on CBS Nationwide. Okay, big change though, Orlando Pride. They've got multiple players that have COVID-19. They're not coming. So instead of a nine-team tournament, it's now an eight-team tournament. And in fact, it also changes the opponents you're going to play. Let's take a look at the new schedule. And Paul Riley, dare I say, this is not easy. You throw in the Red Stars now. You eliminate Houston. Washington showed promise last year. And so did Sky Blue FC. That's a tough schedule, Coach. Yeah, I mean, first things, obviously, our love and prayers uh, to Orlando, Mark, and the players. Hopefully, everybody gets healthy. That's the most important part. And, you know, we have to be the first sport starting up, but this is a huge blow for the, for our Challenge Cup, not to have Orlando there. And the most important part is, the, obviously, the players getting healthy and the staff getting healthy. So, I just want to send my love and prayers to them. And, yeah, the schedule's crazy. I don't know whoever was thinking this at 10 o'clock last night must have had a, a few too many because uh, there's the group of death for sure. And, um, you know, it is what it is, right? So I, I always look at it and I always say to the players, and when you play against the best teams, it prepares you to be better. And, you know, we've definitely been thrown into the, de to the, to the lion's den. There's no question about that. And I think Washington uh, and Chicago and Portland will all feel the same way, you know. And uh, But it, it, it is what it is. And we just get on. We have to all be staying in the same place at the Olympic Village so or, or uh, the uh, NWSL Village, I should say. So I think it's going to be quite interesting times, you know. Uh, talking about the games and being around the players that we're actually going to play at the night. But it's a great schedule, tough schedule, tough eight days, get, getting out to Utah and getting used to the surroundings and, and obviously the high altitude. But you start with Portland. It's the Derby Day. Uh, it's a huge game, huge rivalry. And I think we've played a lot of big games the last four years. We've, you know, we've played 12 knockout games uh, in the last uh, four years, which is 
I think, put us in a great position to play knockout games for the quarterfinal stage down the road. But we played Portland in a lot of knockout games, and it's a great rivalry. They're a fantastic team. A lot of new players this year for them. So a little bit unknown going into that game. I think we're a little bit more of the known factor. They're a little bit unknown, but they'll be fit. They'll be ready. Mark's a great coach. He organizes them really well, and, and their fan base will be. They'll be on the other side of the uh, TV screaming their hearts out, I can tell you that. And then we go to Washington on Wednesday, which is obviously difficult for us because we've been preparing for three weeks for Houston. I'm not sure people understand the preparation that goes in, but, you know, we had a different lineup going out on Wednesday. We prepared that lineup. Uh, we had them last two weekends being prepared as as uh, playing against Houston. And now everything's been disheveled. So all that works down the Swanee, but... What we do, we service players, and the, and the players will just have to realise we've only got 48 hours now to prepare for it. So that I'm a bit disappointed with the league on that one, changing that game. I think the first two games should have stayed as is, so because the, the preparations already happened. Uh, God knows that they think that we don't prepare for a game that's happening on Wednesday when it's already Wednesday tomorrow for the week before. So uh, that's what it is again. And Chicago, obviously, we didn't expect to play Chicago early, but we did expect to play Chicago at some point. Uh, again, a huge rivalry. We played them in the final last year. A really good team, and they'll be different without Sam Kerr. They'll be a different football team without Sam Kerr. And so we're not sure, again, a little bit unknown. The great thing is we get to see Washington play on Sunday. We get to see uh, Chicago play before we play them. And then we wrap up with Sky Blue, and, you know, McCall Zaboni be chasing us around that midfield and, and trying to cause us all sorts of problems. But Sky Blue is a, a different team completely, a different culture completely. So, again, I mean, three fantastic uh, sorry, four fantastic games. And I don't think you can ask for anything more as, as a preparation, as a coach, knowing that they're the four completely different teams. I mean, some great footballers in those four teams. And we're really going to have to prepare for it. You know, Washington, uh, uh, you know, with, with Sullivan and Rose Lavelle create a different entity too. They've got, they've, got, they've got a great midfield and they beat us last time out, you know. They beat us last year and uh, two, two or three games before the end of the season. Uh, I think Richie's done a, a, a really good job with them and they'll be well prepared and we'll see them on the plane tomorrow on the charter flight. So that's, that will be fun too. But yeah, looking forward to it. I know the players, you know, when I told them the change of roster this morning, they kind of just giggled a little bit and said, hey, it is what it is. You know, we want to play the best teams. That's how you get better. And we'll, they'll put, hopefully they'll put out their best lineups against us and prepare us for the quarterfinal. And after that, it's a straight knockout to crapshoot. And uh, obviously we got of penalties after 90 minutes which is also tricky but we've done as much preparation as we can uh, for ourselves and I think as, as you know that it's really about the standards of performance of ourselves and that's what we really concentrate on pre-season we don't have you know we didn't know who we were going to play for a long time uh, so we just prepared ourselves and I'm happy with the fitness level I'm happy with the way the, uh, the team looks we've got good rhythm going in um, and we'll see what you know obviously it's different when the whistle goes and you get onto the field and it's game on but I think the players are excited for the challenge. Before we take a look at the roster and some of the changes we made after another successful season, monumental season for the North Carolina Courage, one final comment. With all due respect to the other side of the schedule, those might be the four best teams in the league. Regardless, as you know, Paul, you're playing for your seed, so it's going to be tough to come out of there with a high seed because there are four quality teams. Yeah, I mean, that, that is tricky. There's no question. But, you know, again, it doesn't matter where you get seeded at the end of the day, right, Dean? you got to play You got to play somebody else and uh, you got to prepare for that quarterfinal game. You have a, a decent amount of time uh, to prepare for it. So, I mean, we've seen, we'll, we'll have seen all of the teams play by that point. So we'll know what we're up against. And we do have good depth. So we're able to make changes. And I think, you know, hopefully going in, into that knockout stage. Now, at least we know we're going to make the knockout stage. Although there was one team that would have got knocked out. Now there isn't. So we know that we're in the knockout stage. So this is really all preparation. But I've told the players, to me, it's a knockout stage. From the Saturday's the knockout stage. You know, we go there to try and, you know, put our, put our will on every team and make sure that they understand who we are and what it is and what we represent. And, and I think that's what we'll do starting Saturday. I don't think you can say, oh, we'll just wait for the quarterfinal, you know, to put our to put up, you know, uh, head to the test, put other teams to the to the sword. We want to do it straight away. And I want to be relentless. I want it to be for them to be difficult against relentless. And that's the main thing for us, play like we can play. And, and then whatever whatever the chips fall, they fall. But yeah, it's a knockout from Saturday for me. It's not a knockout starting in the quarterfinal. Well said. The Bojangles roster reveal. With that, I want to thank all the great corporate partners with the North Carolina Courage. You have been so loyal. You have stayed with the team, and I know you're excited to have the team back out on the field this Saturday, 1230 Portland on CBS. All right, a couple changes after last year. We'll take a look at that. As we know, the great Heather O'Reilly retired. Congratula congratulations to Heather. She just had the birth of her baby, William, and that is awesome. Merritt Mathias working her way back. Just break down some of these changes here, Coach. Yeah, so obviously Merritt's back, and 
uh, she'll be back with the team uh, and in Utah with us, and she'll be training with us. So she's probably tournament came a bit early for her. I think if we played in September, October, she would have made it. Uh, Heather O'Reilly, obviously, uh, she came to practice last week, which was brilliant to see her. And she like she was carrying a soccer ball under a on a t shirt, you know. So uh, congrats to Heather again, and I know the players have all been in contact with her. And she probably did that went out running about an hour later, you know, and get ready and see. Her. Don't be surprised she comes out of retirement that one. Don't don't bet against that one. I'm not. Uh, Leah Pruitt. <laughs> Yeah, Leah Pruitt, obviously, she had a lot of injuries and I don't think ever showed her uh, the extent of what she can play. She was a great pickup for us and I do believe she can play in the league. Um, but she's still injured, she's still hurt. So we, we felt it was in the best interest of Leah and the team just to give Leah a, a different a different place and a different part. And she, I'm not sure she wants to keep playing. She'll have to make that decision. But she's quite a, a quality player and I hope she does stay with the game and you know maybe our paths will cross another day. I mean, obviously, the big loss and McCall's a bony there and we lost a huge leader. Um, chemistry on the team, a leader, motivational uh, person for the group, uh, but bigger than that, I mean, an absolute competitor. Competitor. It doesn't matter if it's a game in the bathtub with a rubber ducky. She she wants to play and she wants to kick you and she wants to compete. And you know, you wonder where that's going to come. And I was worrying coming into preseason who would replace that kind of leadership and that kind of. She played every minute, and you know, she always played and. You know, she was she's been brilliant for us, and again was unlucky to miss out, obviously, in in, in the World Cup, and uh, in my view, would have got there had she not been hurt. Uh, but McCall's a massive loss for us, and you can't. Re- people have asked, we can replace it. We can't replace it. So what you do is you ask players to give more, and I think you'll, you'll see a difference in Sam's leadership. I think you'll see a difference in Sullivan's leadership. Uh, is now with McCall going. I think they realise that the baton's been had, and somebody else has to take the uh, the bat the baton, on, as you say in America. We say baton, um, mm-hmm. but I think that's an important part. You know, she serviced the players like we service the players as a staff, and she was always there, McCall, for everybody. And now it's different, uh, different leadership now. And but other players have to step up, and we have those players. I mean, people like Carrie Vaccaro have been fantastic in preseason. Mary Speck, and uh, they've mm-hmm. stepped up into that leadership role. Obviously, Abby, Z- Abby Erzig, Abby Dalkamper talks a lot more differently, I think, than she did three years ago. Uh, so she's matured into a play. You know, most of our guys have been turning 20, 27 in the last couple of months. And I think the maturity of the team is good. The adaptability of the team is good. And you say goodbye to the old and you bring in the new, you know, and uh, those new players, you know, they've got big, big shoes to fill, but that's what their job is. That's why they're professionals. And we're going to give them a bit of time to fulfill those roles and fill those shoes, but that's not going to be easy for sure. You mentioned the new players, Jorge Acuna, the director of broadcasting, VP of broadcasting for North Carolina Courage and North Carolina FC will pop up the new players on the North Carolina Courage roster. Always excitement when you add new players, no matter what the situation. Tell us about these five young ladies, please, Paul. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ali Watt obviously was the, was the first round draft pick. Uh, she fits in, obviously brilliant for us and uh, a game changer, great wheels, um, you know, good finish. She scored a hat trick last week in, in in a game between inter squad game. It was four three. She scored a hat trick, leading scorer in preseason against ourselves. I'm not sure how that all plays out in the real world, but uh, <laughs> she's been great. And I think you know she came in late. She missed the first start of preseason. She came in this part of preseason after the pandemic. Uh, so she's getting to see her personality a little bit more. She's to come out of her shell, and I think she's going to be a big plus for the team down the years. And uh, she's a young Lynn Williams for me. You know. Uh, she she puts people under pressure. She gets in the box. She's quick and she's athletic. And, um, you know, she's got a nose for the goal, which I like. She can get around that goal and score. So, yeah, she's a big plus for us. And definitely get there and will cause problems, there's no question. Uh, Addison Merrick um, was a player that was a 28th pick. And she's been a revelation in preseason. And uh, she's been pushing for the right-back start. Uh, again, another athletic player, but super positionally. Great defender. Um and I think we, we've never, our fullbacks don't do too much defending, but she's been doing a lot of defending and she's a very, very good defender, but she's good. She's got good vision. Again, she's another player, but positioning is what I really like about her. She's mature over a year too. Good head, good mind for the game, good mentality for the game and fit as a fiddle, obviously. And that's important for us. So she's great. Uh, Haley Mace, I think, is in that group. Um, Haley Mace, Great footballer, better footballer than I ever thought. And, you know, she came to us and the first conversation with Haley was, oh, I, I want to play in the back. I want to make the national team as a defender. I'm like, nah, nah. You're de- you, are, you're, you have decent defensive instincts, but you have amazing attacking instincts. And she's a 10 or a 9. She's brilliant around the net. She can slam it from anywhere. Um, she, she's very, very, she can unlock a back line with it. 
and she can she has a great range of passing. So she has a lot of great qualities that you know really aren't defenders in all in all respect to Kiwi and uh, Abby Del Camper and all our defenders. She she's got special qualities that I think should be high at the field, and those special qualities Crystal Dunn has also. You know, so I think Haley Mason. I think she's probably a, 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 a year away, or at least these seven games away. She needs a little bit more work, I think, from us in, in terms of her fitness and speed and stuff. But she's she's a better football than I ever could have dreamed about. And I'm happy to have her here. And she's going to be a massive piece for us down the road. And then Sinclair Miramontes, another, again, a, a surprise for me, a great footballer, great mind for the game. Uh, she came from the same place as, as uh, Addison. So they came from the same youth club. But another player with a super instinct on the ball and a uh, very clever player, great IQ for the game, can play in the back at, 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 defend, at central defender. She's a little bit undersized, I think, to play in this league at central defender. I said that to her two weeks ago, and she's been a revelation in the inter-squad games. Anyone that's going to chase Lynn Williams down and Kristen Hamilton and uh, Crystal Dunn and Dabinia, I mean, they can only get better chasing them. And Sinclair's going to be really good. She just had a knee operation, so she's not fully fit. Uh, we'll get time in there, but I think she's going to be good for us. And again, a, a really... Uh, above her years in terms of maturity, in terms of uh, soccer intellect. And that's good. I think they've earned the respect of the team, which is obviously important to the group. And I'm excited. I think a lot of them will, will show their, their class maybe a year from now, but they will have impact in this tournament. But a year from now, I think you'll see them step up into some of those shoes of the players that we showed you. Uh, and there's some big roles to fill there for sure. Yeah, Paul, I was excited about the Sinclair Miramontes pick. As you know, I worked for the Big Ten Network as well and called a lot of their games. And she basically ran the show with a three-back system with Coach Walker as the sweeper. She ran the offense. That's how good she was. And she did it about six months removed from a complete torn ACL. So she is a beast fighting through pain, and she can do it all. That's a nice nice pickup indeed. Yeah, I think I would add that to that, Dean. What a passer of the ball she is. I mean, She's Abby Dalcamper esque there. You know, she can hammer a ball down the field, switch the point of attack. Uh, she's very clean on ball on the ball, passing the ball. And for a player common, they're not usually as clean on the ball. And she really is. And yeah, really fabulous football. I'm excited to see her. And I think once we get it up to up to speed in terms of her mobility and speed because of the injury, I think she's going to be dynamic for us. I really do. All right, let's break down the entire roster, everybody that will be on the aforementioned charter plane that you talked about already. And we'll start in the back with goalkeepers. You got three good ones here, Paul. Yeah, we're spoiled. We're doing no turns. We're spoiled. That's like me sitting down to shepherd's pie, filet mignon, and a nice piece of fish. You know what I mean? <laughs> these, three are, these three are all very, very good. Great qualities, very different qualities. You know, and obviously Sam's a shot blocker. Uh, crazy horse, you destroy you, you know, going out for a ball. And then you've got the Sabrium, uh, 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 Steph LeBay, who's just calm and, you know, she keeps everyone organized. And, and again, very good in the air, great feet and, and well organized. Kate's similar in that way. You know, she's very calm and great feet again and great distribution, Kate. And, you know, our goalkeepers don't always have to come up with a lot of saves, but they have to be involved in the game. And, yeah, um, it's a privilege to have the three goalkeepers, in all honesty. And I don't often go to goalie sessions, but I did a couple of goalie sessions mm -hmm. during that group training, and they blew my, blew me away with the work rate, and, and they really are phenomenal three. And, you know, at some point, we have to lose one of them down the road, you know, um, and I'd be ashamed to lose all. And all, I think they'll all play and go away. There's very little between them. Uh, you know, you've got number one, one and a quarter, and one and a half, you know. I mean, they're really top-class goalkeepers, and they'd be starters anywhere in the league. And that's a tough part. When you are what we are, you know, you, you, you sometimes love it. Uh, we're fueled by this competitiveness inside the group. And I would say the goalkeeping job is fueled by major competitiveness to get into that lineup. Reminding you that Samantha Murth Murphy, the former Samantha Leshnock, who played down the road at University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Great job, Paul, breaking down the goalkeepers. Now let's take a look at the defenders. And boy, I'll tell you what, there are some rocks back there, including the two Abbeys in the middle. Well, you always say you put the big rocks in and you put the pebbles around them, right? So the big rocks are the big rocks are the the, the two abbeys in the in the back. They've been just sublime for us over the last uh, couple of years, and the best partnership in the world for me. There's no question about it. But you put the pebbles around it, and by pebbles, I don't mean pebbles. I mean role players that are really, really good at what they do. And when you talk about Jalen Hinkle, the best left back in the world, she's even fitter this year. She's even quicker. She's better on the ball. A great left foot. Nobody has a left foot like that in the league. And uh, um, yeah, she's Dal Camp has matured uh, Kiwi and her. Uh, the great thing about those two, they've made Kelly Kurt so much better. 
Kaylee Kitts is a different player from the player that walked into our building a couple of years ago. Uh, she's leaner, she's meaner, she's tough. She's a great blocker. She's a great typical defender. And, and she's going to play Kaylee. She had a great preseason. Uh, and Abby uh, Kiwi just gets better with age. She's like a great red wine. And, uh, and it's a privilege, again, to have the, those backline players like that. At, at fullback on the right side, we've got tremendous competition for spots. Uh, Ryan Williams, who's been with us a couple of years, a bit stronger this year, a bit quicker, better on the ball than she was a year ago. Uh, she got Haley Harbison, who's back from injury. Uh, Haley was having a great preseason last year when she uh, tore ACL, but she's back fully healthy and doing really well in preseason. Uh, Addison Merrick will be pushing that group in the in the back, and then you've got um, you know you've got other people I think that could help us out. Lindsay Agnew's come in the Canadian international. She can play left back or right back. Uh, and she looked tired first couple of weeks preseason, but I think at this point she's got over the tired legs. She's got herself fit. Uh, good, again, good person, good character, good player, can get up and down the line, fits what we need from a fullback. And she's put the biggest numbers on the board in preseason in terms of workload on the GPS unit. So she's number one just about every day. And that's a, a credit to her. She's been able to do that. And so, yeah, the, the back line is really, really solid. We've got great goalkeeping. So I'm hoping we can keep teams off the board. And we have a lot of flexibility. We can rest players. And I think they do offer a lot of different scenarios in the back. If we need a more attacking right back or we need a more defensive right back. Um, but yeah, it, we've got some back line. We went with the defenders today. And again, when I look at them, we've got nine of them. And I think all nine, of, you know, they're going to make, they're going to, they would make, they would make lineups all throughout this league. And so when we play against them, you know, when you play, they're playing against Lynn Williams, right? So they have to play Lynn Williams and Kristen Hamilton and Jess McDonald and Dabinia running at you and Crystal running at you and Jalen Jalen Hinkle running at you. So how can Ryan Williams not get better and Kaylee Kurtz not get better and Sinclair not get better and these players because you've got the that's what's great about our squad. You know, if you're there and you're playing against these players, you're gonna get better. At least you should. <laughs> All right, let's move to the midfield. And when we see this first page, it's pick a star, any star. And, of course, you've got World Cup stars, you've got national team stars, and you've got the ultimate junkyard dog. I've been getting in trouble for saying she's my favorite. But if you watch soccer, you fall in love with Denise O'Sullivan, and then these other three are just world class as well. Well, we have two things that we talk about a lot. was never allow the player in front of you to settle in the lineup. And I think that's true of our midfield particularly, more so than maybe other positions. You can't settle in this lineup because somebody's banging on that door really loud. And I think the other one is uh, it's about reaching new heights uh, in this midfield. And, you know, from what I've seen in preseason, Sullivan, if it's possible, it just gives a ball even less away than she did last year. I mean, she's been so sharp and so clean on the ball. And I've never seen a player receive and turn uh, on a sixpence like she does not uh, her, and, her and Sam Mewis, their relationship has grown and grown and grown. And, you know, Sam's box to box. There's no better box to box midfielder in the world. We all know that. She can run from the six yard box now, not just the 18 because he's allowed in the six. She can run from six yards to six yards now. And tremendous fitness this year. She's definitely matured. Uh, she's definitely a better player than she was a year ago. And their relationship's definitely better. And uh, uh, just our build out of the back is better with these two building and uh, that they're. They're almost telepathic the way they play with each other. And uh, it's going to be hard to get them out of a lineup. But you know what? Carrie Recaro and Mary Speck, who've been playing on the other team in, in, in preseason, have been out of this well midfielders for us. Uh, Mary's a, a natural lefty. He played up front for me as, as, a, as a young player, but now has settled into a six, understands what we want. Uh, intelligent footballer, went to graduate from Yale. So that intelligent genes all the way through into a soccer mm -hmm. IQ. Carrie Recaro also played for me as a young player. So, they both get it, what's expected of a midfield. And she's another one that uh, carries got tremendous engine. And, you know, any time in that, in that tournament we need to change our sixes, there's two fabulous sixes that can just go into change and we'll be just as good on the interchange. And so we're very deep in that position. I'm very comfortable playing any of the four of them uh, in the six position. In the 10 position, wow. I don't know who'd want to be in our 10 position against Crystal, Dunn and Dabinia. I mean, they are the two best. There's no question. And they know how to play in the 10. They score goals. The way we play with our two nines separated by quite a bit of distance, those two end up getting in the box a lot. And the one thing is they can beat you on the dribble. They can pass, they can pass you to death. Uh, they can connect. Uh, they can draw players in. They can drop deep to pick up balls. They can drop into full back areas to full pick up ball. So it's hard to mark them, you know. And I've seen that again, an, an improvement in their mental capacity to play and to find different seams and um, to get on the perimeters of the, of the opponent's six. And I ask Mary and Carrie every day when they play against them, you've got better because you've got to chase these two. And how do you chase these two buggers? They're everywhere. You know what I'm saying? They're left, they're right, they're going back, they're going deep, they're, they're checking in, they're running behind you. It's so difficult. And 
I would give credit to both of them. They've made Lauren uh, Millet better. Lauren Millet has been the surprise of preseason for me. A year ago, she couldn't make the 18. I'd be surprised if she's not in the lineup by the time we get to the quarterfinals. She's been outstanding. I would think every player you ask in our squad, who's the player, the most valuable player of preseason, they would say Lauren Mill- Millet. She has been excellent, man. She's, she's a little bit quicker than last year, a little bit stronger than last year. Uh, she also, she's had a great mind for the game, skillful, can run at an opponent. Uh, and again, she's been playing against Sam and Sully. So she has to be clean. She has to be comfortable on the ball. And uh, the one thing that's missing, I think, that she needs to add, which I think uh, Dabinia has and Crystal has, is that final piece, you know, the, the goal scoring part. She's got all the other pieces, man. What a revelation. It's been in preseason. I'm excited to see her play. And she'll play in for Crystal and give Crystal a blow in some games. She'll play for Dabinia. I'm totally comfortable playing her. And then you got Haley Mace, who's coming in. We talked about it a little bit before. She'll play in the 10. And she's been really good. She scores goals from distance and spread the ball around. And yeah, we're, we've got depth in that midfield. We go eight deep. There's eight eight midfielders the way we're looking at it. Uh, they're all super talented. I can't imagine that, that they don't all play because they are that good. And again, they could play anywhere. They really could play anywhere. But it, it, our, our inter-squad scrimmages with those eight going against each other, man, it is good to watch. <laughs> Sometimes I just go out to referee and I find myself just going, God, that is good. Whispering to myself, that is really good. My God, <laughs> the beanie, that is so good. Oh my God, carry okay, what a ball. And, you know, it's just a, it's just a credit to them, you know. And I get it, the failure, failure is part of being, you know, being in, in a competitive environment. But they don't want to fail in any way. The second team is pushing and pushing and pushing. And that's part of our process of getting better. And that's how Sam and Sully's got better. And that's how Carrie and Mary's got better. So, yeah, midfielders, yeah, I'd, I'd trust them with anybody against any team in the world and any of them. So I'm excited to see you know, some new faces like uh, Haley and Lauren get some good time there and, and do well for us. Finally, Paul, the front line, you are, again, loaded with quality depth. Yeah. The four lines, <laughs> we got a lot of depth. And obviously, bringing Ali Watt into that group has given us more depth. Uh, Jess Max has a slight hamstring problem, but they've been excellent in preseason. I mean, Kristen Hamilton were, has got a taste of the national team. At the end of last year, Lynn Williams has been in with the national team. Jess Max on the national team. Uh, Ali Watt's been with the younger, with the youth national team. So uh, there's certainly a lot of talent. Mackenzie Meehan has come into preseason much, much fitter than last year. And again, anytime you get a full year with the group or at least full preseason, it's a lot different than coming in mid-season when everybody's already in shape and uh, already established themselves. So she's done really, really well, Mackenzie. And uh, this group, you know, Kristen Hamilton had a, a knee operation at the beginning of preseason. We're back to her best already. I mean, she's almost impossible to mark. She's all over the field. Lynn Williams, is, you know, she's direct. She goes at you. She causes problems. And Jess Mack, we know about Jess Mack. She's getting younger every time she takes another <laughs> birthday. Seems to get younger, but as a group together, I mean, it's a phenomenal group, and I do think their ability makes the midfield easier, their job easier, because they stretch teams out. Teams are scared of the pace getting in behind, and it leaves room underneath for the for the tens and sixes to operate, you know, for us. So I do think that uh, they have such, you know, that they're, they're strong, they're they're, they're quick, uh, they're gr- great mentality in the box, and they're brave. They're willing to they're willing to take chances. They're invested in what we're doing. We have them in front of goal most of the preseason. I think that's a one piece missing for me. Is they we have to get them better in front of goal, and you know that's just, I would say same for every forward in the league probably get in front of goal, do as much as you possibly can, and you know my job is to make them as, as good as I possibly can, give them the environment to get as good in the tools, and then it's up to them. And they're all invested, and if you're invested, in it, that means more. I think when you're invested, and that group particularly is invested in. You know, the problem for me is going to be which two to pick, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because they're really that good, all of them. And they're all game changers. The great thing is if you can bring in Jess Mack into a game, wow. If you can bring a Lynn Williams into a game, wow. Ali Watt, it can change the game just like that. And so uh, we've got game changers. And, you know, you know, the five sub rule in the tournament could play to our advantage a little bit with, with these kind of forwards. We do have five forwards that can change the game. And I don't know if everyone else has that kind of depth up front. So if we're chasing the game and we need goals, you know, we've got – a, a good group of players to go to. So, yeah, I'm excited. They've had great preseason to all of them. And, and now it's a matter of they, I know they want to be challenged. They want to get kicked a little bit more by somebody else and, and see what they're made of. And they will get that on Saturday against Portland, that's for sure. Props to you, Paul Riley. Outstanding job breaking down the roster, giving love to every single player on your team for a good reason, because I know you said they come in buzzing and they've looked outstanding. Of course, across the jersey is Continental Tire. I do need to plug. Now through June 30th, you can purchase four 
qualifying Continental Tire passenger tires and receive a $70 prepaid Visa card. Visit ContinentalTire.com or your local Continental Tire dealer. For more details, Continental Tire, official sponsor of the North Carolina Courage. We end with two pieces of business. We put the schedule back up there again. We focus on Saturday, 1230. That'll be 1030 your time. The Portland Thorns preview that game one more time. Paul Riley. Yeah. Breakfast in Utah. I mean, what a game to have breakfast in Utah, right? Yeah, 12.30 kickoff here. I mean, it's the big rivalry in the league. Uh, it's the teams that have been in the most finals recently against each other, semifinals against each other. They've got a lot of new players. Obviously, Becky Souring coming in from the national team will, will make their back line a little bit tighter. It's going to be some game for us. I'm looking forward to it. You know, the best thing about Portland is they always put the best foot forward. They always make it difficult for you, and that's a great for us. That, that's what's going to make us better. That's what's going to make Sam Mewis better. And, you know, Lindsey Horan, Sinclair, they've got big names, and they've got great footballers. And, yeah, what, what a first game for the whole tournament. CBS has got, I think, the first ever, uh, you know, league game for women's soccer being shown on TV. So, hopefully, it'll be a classic game. Uh, there's two great teams. We've had some great games over the years, and that 4-3 Way long ago, when Western New York was some game, and the, when we won the final in Portland, three now was some game too, from at least from our perspective. Uh, but it's a great rivalry, and I'm excited. Mark will have them ready to go, and uh, their fans will be cheering. They'll be all up in Portland waiting for the game, so I think that'll be good, really good. Best fans in the world as well. I think you can say they're loyal fans. They'll be following you. And the North Carolina Courage have put out an ambitious schedule. We're going to do on the road with. We're going to do pregame shows. We're going to do postgame shows. Paul, I know you're going to get sick of me, in fact. But our fans want to hear from you. They'll want to touch you. They'll want to also touch the players. So the coverage is going to be off the charts. I think that's important, right, for the fans because they can't be at Wakebed Soccer Park. So we're going to bring them to the fans back here in North Carolina, Coach. Well, I don't think we'll ever have another year like this, right? So this is a strange year with the pandemic. Let's hope we don't. None of our lifetimes we'd ever thought we would go through this, but we have. I don't think there's any book as a coach. There's no book as players and there's no book as a fan. So what we can give the fans, the more we can give them in Utah, the better. It's a great time. The listen, the players have been working so hard. Some of them haven't played a game in six, seven months. So this will be their first out in six, seven months for the national team players. It's probably only three months, but they've been working so hard because they don't want to let the fans down. And, and I tell them that, you know, you got to be brave. You got to put your best foot forward and whatever happens, happens. But just support them, give everything you can. And we'll be giving you great stuff out there. Hopefully we got some great highlights to go with the great stuff, uh, with the great interviews and everything. But it's a team that you want to know. It's people you want to know. They're great human beings above being great players too. And, and that's why it's such a privilege to coach the group. So, yeah, watch all the games, stay on board with it. And uh, we got the best commentators too. Dean's been with me a long time and it's a pleasure to always come on with him. And I hope the fans get a chance to see all the games and, and follow the team. And thanks again for you, Dean, for doing this and, and making sure that the fans can get, get to the heart of our team because that's really important to us. All thanks goes to you for this and in advance for everything you give us in Utah. Wish you safety, Paul Riley. And as you said, safety for the Orlando folks as well. Safety for everybody, particularly the medical people on the front line. This has been the Bojangles roster reveal. No one better than the great Paul Riley. Thank you, sir. Good luck in Utah. You're welcome, Ray. Thanks, guys. All the best. Thank you. Paul.